In this study, we're going to go over the gospel, what the gospel is, where to find the gospel. If you're saved, then you need to know where the gospel is in the Bible. You need to be able to show other people where to find the gospel. At least memorize the verse in the chapter and the book where it, where it is. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the Apostle Paul reveals the gospel to us, and this, this is the same gospel that he got by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And number one, it is a gospel to be preached. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. We should all be preaching the gospel to somebody. Every Christian should be a preacher of the gospel. It says in Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Just because you're not a preacher doesn't mean you can't preach the gospel. Don't be ashamed to give out the gospel to others. Paul preached it because he wasn't ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That verse said it was the power of God. And the power of God is greater than the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places that would attack us in this life. It is greater than the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil. So if you're not ashamed of the gospel, then preach the gospel to others. This is the duty of every Christian. Tell the gospel to every person. Put it on your car, in your front yard, on Facebook, and anywhere possible. 1 Corinthians 9.16 says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. So Paul says, Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. And don't preach the gospel to get glory for yourself. Don't preach the gospel like a Bible corrector who will remove the major doctrines about Jesus Christ from the Bible. The gospel is simple, and the common man can understand it. In 1 Corinthians 1.17, Paul says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And please don't preach water baptism as part of the gospel. When the verse I just quoted told you that it isn't even part of the gospel, it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So, if Christ sent Paul not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, that shows that baptism, water baptism, isn't even part of the gospel. In Romans 1.15, Paul is ready to preach the gospel. In Romans 15.20, Paul says, I have strived to preach the gospel. Some of you aren't trying to preach the gospel, and this equals out to no rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. You aren't having a hand in anyone getting into heaven. And wouldn't you want to be a part of someone's eternal soul spending eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians 9.16 says, For though I preach the gospel... I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. One of the things the Lord hates is feet that be quick to run to mischief. But Paul says in Romans, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And that is what the gospel is. It's glad tidings. What kind of gospel is the gospel we read in Romans or in 1 Corinthians 15. It is a gospel you must receive. 1 Corinthians 15.1 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. If the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you don't just believe it happened, you receive it as your payment. You have to receive it. The Bible says even the devils believe and tremble. The devils saw Jesus get crucified. They know all the facts. They know what happened. But they aren't going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, even if they could believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their payment for sin. 
all of us have the option of accepting or rejecting Jesus Christ. We have the facts of what happened, what the Bible says about it. It tells us Jesus Christ died for our sins, and it's up to us to accept Him as our payment for sin. So if you want to get saved, then you need to believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as your payment, your only payment for sin. You receive Him as your payment by putting your trust in in him and what he did on the cross to save you and that is why acts 16 31 says to believe on the lord jesus christ i'm counting on him not my own works not my denomination not my church membership or my water baptism or my good life before or after salvation or anything else so you receive it you preach it and you keep it in memory first corinthians 15 1 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Everyone should commit 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to memory. Most people can't even tell you where the gospel is in the Bible, what it means or what it has to do with salvation, period. But you need to memorize the gospel. Most people know songs by heart. They know the lines of TV shows by heart, but they don't know the gospel. They know John 3.16. But where is the death, burial, and resurrection in John 3.16? Most Christians can't tell you where to f they can find the death, burial, and resurrection. Maybe you can't memorize good, but if you can read or memorize 1 Corinthians 15.3-4, then you'll be able to tell somebody the gospel. And John 14, 26 talks about the Holy Spirit bringing all things to your remembrance. Just read it over and over again and try to memorize it. And then when the time comes to witness to someone, the Holy Spirit will bring that back to your remembrance. Not only this, but it is a bloody gospel. It's a gospel to be preached, received, and it's also a bloody gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says... For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died, and it is as sure as the perfect Word of God, because it is according to the Scriptures. If Jesus Christ died, then how did He die? He didn't by, die by being drowned. They didn't throw Him off of a building. He died on the cross, and He shed His blood. In Colossians 1.14 it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We are justified by his blood. Jesus Christ is the one whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. That means he appeased the wrath of God when he shed his blood. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He took the cup of God's wrath and we are saved from wrath through him. Now ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You are no longer a stranger or an enemy of God, but an adopted son of God, because he has made peace by the blood of his cross. By his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us all. He sanctified the people with his own blood. Without the shedding of blood there is no remission, because the blood of goats and calves can't take away sin. It had to be the blood of the Lamb of God slain, the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son cleanses us from all sin. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it cleanses us from all sin because it is the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So he died for us, he loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So it is a bloody gospel. Jesus died, he was buried, and then he resurrects. In 1 Corinthians fifteen three and 4, it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The proof that Jesus Christ is God is that he rose from the dead the third day according to the Scriptures. I'm taking for granted you believe the Scriptures. If you believe them, then you have to believe that he rose again. And Paul certainly believed in a resurrection. 1 Corinthians fifteen sixteen and seventeen says, "For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not ra then is not Christ raised? 
And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. So, if Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, we're all going to hell. Because that shows he wasn't God. That shows he wasn't a perfect sacrifice. And Romans 6, 4 says... Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And then 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. Colossians 2.12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Ephesians 1.19 and 20, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So not only Paul believes the resurrection, Peter even believes the resurrection. As he says in 1 Peter 1.19 through 21, it says, But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So the gospel is this. Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins, shedding his blood for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And because Jesus Christ lived a sinless life, he was born of a virgin and he is God in the flesh. He was able to be the perfect sacrifice for sin. He died for sin once and for all. And if you will come to him as the guilty sinner that you are, everyone is a sinner for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you put your trust in him and what he did on the cross as your payment for all those sins. Then you can be saved and have eternal life. All you have to do is come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner. However you do, that's fine. I'm not against praying a prayer. It's not the prayer which saves. But if someone wants to pray a prayer and they're going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they can easily uh, be saved right even before they say the prayer or as they say the prayer. Uh, you believe in your heart to salvation. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We're not saved by any works. We're not saved by doing good before we're saved. We're not saved by doing good after we're saved. The Bible says in Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So quit worrying about trying to live a good life to get to heaven. You want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to get to heaven and then worry about living a good life. Not to keep salvation, but just because you want to please Jesus Christ and because you appreciate what he did for you on the cross. But I hope that you understand the gospel. I hope this has made it more clear and I hope that you will believe the gospel today if you're not saved.